Um, guys, welcome to episode two of Don't Do What We Do. We literally waited in an airport for eight hours and still missed our flight. But let's just rewind for a little bit. So we are currently in Peru, hence why I put on a jumper because we're back in altitude and it's a little bit chilly this morning. 48 hours ago, we left our hotel in Buenos Aires. <laughs> Once again, had some issues with bookings.com. What hotel doesn't take your money when you check in, but wants all your money in cash at 2 a.m. in the morning? So we pretty much just had to bail on our scary hotel and be like, we'll pay you guys later and caught a taxi to the airport and then luckily got to Lima with no issues. But this is where the issues happen. We're in the Lima airport, waited eight hours to catch our flight and somehow we missed it. Literally last minute, they changed our gate on us and there were two companies that fly to Kajamaka and they put the second company in where we we're meant to fly out. So we literally went to check in and they're like, you're at the wrong company. You have to go to a different gate. So we quickly ran down and we missed our flight. So we had to wait another full day at the airport. We literally spent 48 hours at that Lima airport. 30 minute Wi-Fi. What is this, internet for ants? What is this? A center for ants? 2.46. A.M. Let's do this again. Here we are again. Hopefully it works this time. We made the flights. For a one hour oh. flight, it took us 24 <laughs> hours, but we're here in Kajamaka. 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 We are finally here. It is like 7 a.m. in the morning, and I haven't had any sleep for the last two days. But welcome to Kajamaka, everybody. This is where we're staying. Let's go give you a room tour. Guys, I need to give you a room tour of the place we've been staying in. It is so cool. This is probably the un most unique place we've stayed at so far in Peru. This, this here heats up our shower and inside there is our shower. We've got our toilet and our sink. And then up here is actually where we've been living. You have to climb up these stairs. And then this is our room. We've got a gigantic bed, storage, it's all made of mud, by the way. All our bags have just been chilling here. We've been editing there. And um, yeah, this is like the little thing. So downstairs, when we heat up that stove, this heats up and then it goes down into our shower. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's super unique. And then we've got giant windows. Hi, Steve. Locals just like... Of our view. Yeah, you can just see locals out there working. I think they're building something. So currently in the middle of nowhere on a farm and yes, this is where we've been getting our eggs in the morning from these chickens. The duck. Chicken's the behind. Chicken behind. <laughs> My finger was in the wrong place. And yes, it is like chicken coop goals. It's like a little castle for them. Also, there are the cows out there. We've been getting our fresh milk for coffee in the morning. I feel like a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Being able to like live naturally off a lot of stuff. This is where we've been having breakfast every morning. Buenos dias! Buenos dias! It all looks so good. We even have some like cooked sweet potato, some cheese, some fruit and stuff. You can have my avocado. Guys, you know the people of Peru love their guinea pigs. So they have a guinea pig farm here. Look at those babies, but have you ever seen a pregnant guinea pig? No. Look how fat she is. What? Looks like she's going to give birth any time. But look at the babies! Oh, don't scare her. Oh my god, she's oh, not she even going to fit through there. Come on. Don't scare her, don't scare her, she's too fat. <laughs> <laughs> we need some outside because we literally just spent over a day in an airport. So we found a famous hike here in Cajamarca that gives you amazing views over the city. And the locals use it every Easter because you follow these crosses and at the top there's a giant cross and they actually come up here and do mass on Easter. Buenos dias, Jesus dog. Um, but it gives you an epic view of the city. And now yeah, you can actually like see how remote we are right now because this city is tiny probably compared to any other city we've been to so far 
altitude again, guys. Two point two thousand eight hundred meters high. So, and we got to puffing. Three hours. Yeah. <laughs> we made it. Yay! This just shows you how remote it is. Farmland, beautiful green, lush farm, and then that's. I assume we haven't been to the city yet, but that looks like the CBD there, and then I think the airport's over there. It's so small. Because it's like sucking, like trying to find nipples. It's so cute. It's a Peruvian car wash. <laughs> So the public transport here in Peru is super interesting. It's a two-man job. You got the driver and you have this dude here. He just jumps out screaming where you need to go. So the hats here in Cajamarca are different to everywhere else in Peru. So interesting. We've seen like three different styles. You see the traditional one in like Cusco. When we went out to the islands, they wore like a bowler hat. And I know this sounds so bad, but every time I see the hats here in Cajamarca, I think of that scene from The Simpsons where Homer has like the taco hat. <laughs> and he's like eating it and it's like nachos and he's dipping it in the guacamole. <laughs> Nacho, nacho man. I want to be a nacho man. So we just arrived at our kindergarten placement this morning and the kindergarten is from like three to five year olds with locals who just kind of live around the area. So the local teachers just found a space here in the city, being in a country where unfortunately they're not as fortunate as we are. They just have to make do with what space they have. I mean, it's honestly right in front of a construction site right here. It looks like a bit of a shipping container, but the classroom has character. It's very cute. <laughs> it's currently breakfast time, so the kids at the kindergarten get fed breakfast and lunch. And we just arrived in time to uh, dish out some breakfast for them. They even have a classroom doggy called Casper. Hello! <laughs> and because it's breakfast time, I think he's looking for some snacks. Alrighty, so we're going to be starting our first lesson of the day because they're only in kindy, they're currently learning their numbers, colours, letters, so today I'm going to be doing numbers with them and their colours. So now it's the end of the lesson and the kids are drawing anything they want to know the word in in English. They might draw a dog and then we can write down dog and try and teach them some new English word. Hello. <laughs> we just finished teaching for the day and I had a little knock on our trap door. And our volunteer corner is the sweetest lady. She's brought us up some like tea and cookies. Oh, oh this is so nice of her. This is exactly what I feel like right now. Okay, I'm just whipping out all the fun facts here. See this plaza, this square here? Did not realize that this is probably one of the most historical spaces here in Peru. And it's just in a town that not a lot of tourists will come to. Like, Cajamarca is not a place that on people's priority. But this is pretty much where the Incan Empire ended. Like, they captured the king and the Spaniards just took over and that was just the end of it. And this square is pretty much where they killed the king. And by the way, another fun fact, calm down guys. Getting better at this travel facts, but Inca means king. The Incan Empire is like the king's people. But yeah, this is where it all ended.
Jumping in some tuk-tuks to get to the lagoon. <laughs> it's gonna be bumpy. Yeah. Wow, that was an experience. <laughs> Guys, there's no school on Saturdays, which means we have the day off. So we decided to come out to Lake St. Nicholas. Uh, I don't think many of you guys would have heard of it because it's quite a small family run lake. And it's super interesting because like you come out here and you spend the day. What we're gonna do is start off with going on this lake right here with the reed boat similar to Lake Titicaca. And then it's gonna end with a lunch. And the lunch is pretty much gonna be prepared with all the local ingredients made from the lake so we're gonna have like trout from the lake they've made potatoes over there for the carnivals there are some uh, <laughs> some guinea pigs for them to eat so currently walking on the lake at the moment just heading out and of course they have the reed boats just over here which is i think it's so cool that they can just make from their natural environment just a way of transportation this is one of the boats that they made out of reeds interesting jetty they have here I'd like to say by land, but I don't think we're standing on land. <laughs> so quiet and peaceful on this lake. The water is so clear. So just jumped off and this is the restaurant that the family owns and we're gonna have lunch here. This is lunch and the trout was caught from the from the lake and then the potatoes from their farm and then the vegetables as well. That's kind of cool. Our guide is such an entrepreneur. He's the chef, the taxi driver, the guide, our boat driver <laughs> and he cooks for us.